1969 Dodge Charger by Ravel coming up next on Monster Hobbies. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again Mopar fans. Are you ready for another great model kit unboxing? Well today you're in luck because we are going to crack the lid open on this 1969 Dodge Charger by Ravel. This is an amazing model kit. You don't want to miss this great video. But before we go and take a look at the actual contents of this box, I want to share with you some of the box tops that have come and gone over the past that are in this model kit's bloodline. So without further ado, let's check that out. In its day, the 69 Charger was one of the toughest muscle cars on the automotive scene. Since then, it has achieved classic status among muscle car fans. With its timeless styling and monster engine thundering under the hood, it's no wonder the Charger became a legend. And today, we're going to be looking at Ravel Monogram's 69 Dodge Charger kit. This kit is pretty cool. It was first released in 1997, and it's been with us ever since. So. Let's just take a look at the box here for a minute. And here we can see all the exciting features of this kit. It is 8 and 5 16 inches long, 132 pieces molded in white, water slide decals, comes with a 440 cubic inch V8 engine, highly detailed interior and chassis, authentic factory stock detailing decals, and molded in white, clear, transparent, red with chrome plated parts and black vinyl tires. And in this panel over here, we have all the paint callouts that we need. Chevy engine red in a Chrysler? What's going on here? <laughs> anyway, that's the cool parts. Turning the box up on its end, of course, we see another picture of the model on the box. Skill level 2 kit, ages 10. Re paint and glue required and then we just zoom in here and here's the awesome Magnum 440 engine I guess they're painting it Chevy engine red but should actually be Chrysler engine red and then here's the back and what's unique about this car is it's got a vinyl top on it which is a pretty nice feature for the model kit considering that the other Dodge Charger is of course the AMT kit coming soon to this channel, but for this week we're going to look at the 69 Dodge Charger from Ravel Monogram. This one of course came out in 1998 actually. So just moving the box lid off, we get to see our great instruction sheet with the Dodge story right in here, the Charger story. There's our nice decal sheet with the different stripes on there. Then, of course, we have my favorite, which is the chrome. And then, what's going on here? Clear glass windows. I do believe my wife owns this kit, so she was working on the interior. So there you get separate panels. Nice hood. The black tires. Oop, the undercarriage and rear red taillights. There's our body with that nice vinyl top. Then we've got some white pieces, white pieces, more white pieces, more, keep it coming. <laughs> There's some of the door panels my wife was working on, and then lots of white pieces, good old stuff, seats and everything. Looking good, looking good. All right, that's about it. So I will take this box out of the way and we will go and check out our instruction sheet. And here we have our Dodge Charger instruction sheets. And it's one of those booklet affairs. 
Tells you all the colors to paint your car in. Oh, it says Chrysler engine red here. Aha! So on the box lid, there was a boo-boo. <laughs> okay, so this just folds out again, much like all the other instruction sheets. So let's just check this thing out panel by panel. In panel one, we have our engine assembly, and this is in A and B sections. So for the A section, we have a carburetor, intake manifold, coil, you have your valve covers and cylinder heads going on there. The engine block is a two-piece and it's all hollow on the top. Water pump gluing on, our oil filter and our oil pan. And then as we come across into the B section, we have our exhaust right and left manifolds going on. We've got our starter coming in underneath here. The two-piece transmission going on. Our air cleaner with a decal. And then power steering pump alternator, the belts and pulleys, the fan and the fan clutch. Panel two is our interior floor assembly. Here we've got our firewall, the pedals gluing on. This one even includes a little parking brake. Uh, here's our heater box. There's our console that has interior lights that glue on the side as well, as well as a trim piece on the end in our interior floor mats going in there. Then there is a seat brace that comes in here which is kind of a cool thing, even though it may be covered by the back seat. So let's check out our other panels to see more of the interior. Panel 3 here shows the dashboard assembly, and you get a multi-piece dashboard, which is nice because you can get your brush in here, paint the details, and then put the top on. So we have gauges with decals that go on, the front of the dashboard, the top, the steering column, and the steering wheel. Section 4 shows our main interior assembly, We've got our dashboard completed going into these separate door panels. The bucket seats for the front get glued together so you get the front and the back as well as the headrests. And the rear seat which covers over that nice brace. There is a shifter in here as well. Panel 5 is showing our body assembly going together with of course the body here and then all our clear windows as well as the rear view mirror. And then the body hooks into the interior which then hooks onto the chassis and the engine drops in to the engine mounts. I do believe it goes one, two, three, four. Panel six shows our radiator assembly and as you can see here it's a multi-piece affair with the horns. So we've got a fan shroud, our radiator, the two horns, the core support and the header panel up here. So that's a lot of stuff and it even says paint the recessed area up there flat black. Panel 7 shows our exhaust assembly dropping in to our chassis here. You also get the steering box with the steering shaft, the lower radiator hose, and these you paint aluminum with steel clamps. Panel 8 is our front suspension assembly, and this has opposable wheels. So you get right and left spindle, you get uh, this, which is a K, K member, pardon me, stabilizer arm, a tie rod, and that all pops together, the shock absorbers go in, and then you have your posable steering. This, of course, is torsion bar suspension, which was a wound-up spring inside these tubes. Panel 9 takes us to our rear suspension assembly, and here you hook the drive shaft into the end of the transmission. You put in your Dana rear axle with the cover, the leaf springs drop in, and the shock absorbers and the tops of the leaf springs all hook up underneath here in the back of the chassis. Our tire wheel assembly is the Chrysler version of the Magnum 500s. They pop into our tires and then that goes onto an inner wheel. There is a wheel retainer and a disc rotor for the front. And in the back it's a little more simplified. Outer wheel, tire, retainer and the inner wheel. These would be drums on the back. Panel 11 shows our rear body assembly. And this is where you put your exhaust tips onto the back of those exhaust pipes. The entire back end pops in. This, of course, is painted flat black or gloss black in there. Tail lights popping into there. A little backup lights, the rear bumper, and the license plate. Panel 12 takes us to our front end assembly. And here you get your front valence going underneath, as well as your grill going in there. And then a the license plate with your choice of license plate decals. Then we've got our hood with the hood hinges. All the little hoses for the heater and radiator and windshield wiper reservoirs going in as well. 
power brake boosters, batteries, the whole deal pops underneath your hood. Panel 13 brings us to our final assembly, which of course are the windshield wipers and the door handles and mirror, and the awesome gas cap popping onto our body. Finally, panel 14 is our decal placement, and here you get your choice of the optional stripes. There's three different colors to choose from, and then it's showing you all the different decals and everything that goes on there. And that brings us to the conclusion of our instruction sheet. So now let's go and see all the plastic parts. Welcome back Chrysler fans. Now we're going to take a look at our plastic body here for a 1969 Dodge Charger. And this is a cool kit. It has that nice vinyl roof with the ridges and many other awesome features. So bringing this up to the camera, of course, proportions look pretty accurate. You even have these side vent scoops in here, our turn signal lights, then all our fender aprons. There's a little piece you got to remove from here. Flipping the body over, there are a couple of mold marks underneath here, uh, but don't get confused. There's one right in the dead center of the roof. That's actually for the dome light. There is the roof texture in here. So again, quite a nice detailed body for our 69 Charger. And while we're here, since the hood was loose, you can see the nice fit it's going to have on here. Nice and tight there. And then underneath, you've got a bit of your mat under here, as well as the bracing. There are a couple of mold marks, so again, remove them with your number 16 hobby blade. And there is our charger. Following up on the body, we have the chassis, and of course this is a unibody style, with the subframes going in here, and then our side rocker panels. There's wonderful detail on these panels, and of course we got our fuel cell in the back. So let's just bring this up to the camera, just to focus in on the detail. You can see the nice, nice components under here. There's even some of the brake lines and whatnot molded in place. Back end looks good. Turning it over, there's not really any mold marks that are being a problem, but there is a bit of flash on this edge, which of course can be taken out with your sandpaper block. Next up we have our sprue with our engine components on it, and here's the block for the 440, as well as the cylinder heads, the valve covers, the oil pan, the front cover, our fans, there's our wheel backs, air cleaner, the shock absorbers for the rear springs, the exhaust manifolds, the little coil I believe, this is the engine valley cover, and then there's our intake manifold. So quite a bunch of cool kits, or parts, <laughs> pardon me, with a bunch of nice detail on them. A little bit of things you got to remove off that fan. And turning it over, there's not really any mold marks under here, so that's always a good sign. And here we have two spree trees side by side. Here's our exhaust pipes with the nice mufflers, as well as the steering column and a bunch of small components. Not sure what these are, I'll have to turn them over to take a look. There's our steering column and steering wheel with that nice padded horn button. Then we've got our horns, and I do believe these are the other two horns. Bunch of the engine components and firewall components. And then we've got this nice interior center console here. So let's just bring this up. Let's turn that over. What are those things? Oh, there's the retainers for the wheels. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. So, fairly simplistic detail on them. Parts are quite nice. There's a console there. See the nice detail. Very correct for this car. Next up we have a bunch of different mix components. There's our radiator, a distributor, the hood hinges, not sure what this is. Okay, the fan shroud, and then this is our K member here for our front suspension, the torsion bars coming off the back, and our kingpins here with little steering buttons. Hook up to the tie rod end, I do believe. And there we go, flipping them over. A little mold mark right there. 
but this is fairly decent for mold marks as far as it all goes. Now I know there was a Dick, Dick Landy Dodge. I don't know if this is part of that. Kind of hard to tell, but anyway, there you go. Next up we have more of the components to make up the body and of course a radiator support and firewall. There's a brace for our seat in the back, then sway bars and tie rods, all kinds of goodness. There's the charger rear end and the front valence panel, as well as a little bumper piece here, or nose piece, the drive shaft. And then again, looking at how nice these components are. And not really much of the mold marks. There's our dashboard, uh, sorry, firewall, pardon me. There are some sink marks in here. So just make sure you fill those or sand them out. And again on the support right there and there. But overall, again, nice detail work from Ravel. This parts tree is a little bit interesting because there's two sets of pulleys here. And I'm pretty sure if you cut these out, they would line up perfectly on top of each other. So I don't really quite understand what's going on there. Anyway, if you lose one, you got a spare. Okay, there's the top of our dashboard and our front of the dashboard, as well as the two transmission halves, the booster part of our power brakes, the battery, the springs, the Dana rear axle, and then of course our pedals and a heater hose. So again, looking at the detail on there, you can tell it's nice and crisp. Very well done. Look at the bolts on the cover for the differential. And then, I, well, I was thinking there was a name on the battery, but there's not, at least not on the top. Anyway, looking underneath, a couple little marks in there, but nothing to worry about. Anyway, there we go for those components. Now, since my wife was beginning to work on the interior, I thought I'd just lay these out this way. Uh, this little part sprue here, or the tree, has our radiator hoses as well as the shock absorbers for, I do believe, the front axle. Now, looking at the bucket seats, you have the nice pleated uh, panels on there, and then the backs of the seats, and then we've got our two-piece headrests. So they've got little pins, locator pins on them. This, of course, is how the cushion looks in the front. Oops, I just flipped it over. <laughs> There's the headrest and all that going together. And then you got the nice side door panels and this nice floor pan. Now the brace would go into here. And then this is our rear bench seat going across the back, which has the two little pins, pardon me. So this will fit right over there. It's kind of a shame that that brace goes away, but I think that was for the uh, Dick Landy Dodge because it would be the racing one, so you'd see the back and everything, right? So just take a look at the nice detail on the seat there. Nice work. The inner door panels. They even have the pocket going here for your maps and whatnot with actually the right kind of stress pattern on that fabric. So that's really cool, whoever designed that. Then of course you get your nice separately molded window cranks and door handles which are nice because they end up looking like that, like the real deal. This is a GM door handle. So sorry to you Chrysler guys. <laughs> anyway, but you get the idea. Looking at the floor pan, chassis floor pan's really nice. Underneath, not very much detail, but again, that's okay because that's taken up with the chassis pan. And basically, that's our interior in a nutshell. Next up is my favorite part, which again is the chrome. And you can see the nice little chrome details. These are the front disc brakes, I believe. There we've got a rear view mirror, alternator, the fuel cap. Uh, well, that's a gear shift lever. Windshield wipers. That also looks like a fuel cap. Maybe that's a side mirror. Kind of hard to tell from my angle. Uh, door handles. Um, some other bits. Oh, there's our tailpipes. Then we've got our bumper and our grill, the license plates here, the Magnum 500 wheels going across there, carburetor, and RT trim. And this piece. <laughs> so let's bring this up to the camera. What is that thing? Anyway, look at the uh, nice detail work on the grill. That, of course, 
needs a little black wash in there come up quite nice this was the year with the divided grill 69 charger came out in 68 didn't have the divided grill and had round tail lights at the back so this was the year that they used the rectangular tail lights and just turning this over a couple of mold marks sand them down paint this black in the back no one will ever see it again i like those little disc brakes going on there and magnum 500 wheels we'll need a bit of paint in there to make them pop but overall very nice chrome now here i'm going to do the glass and tail lamps and tires all in the same thing here we have goodyear wide tread speedway tires which are really cool something unique to this kit of course we'll get to those in a minute so here we have the gauges and the little inside interior lamps washer bottle and our windows and it also has the sun visors molded in Tail lights are pretty basic, really. And then, of course, our tires. So let's just move the tires and the tail lamps out of the way and bring this glass up. You can see the nice detail in here. Very cool getting clear parts. Always nice. So move those out of the way. There's our tail lamps. They are the correct shape, and they actually have a little grill in here. So, again, pretty nice. And then getting into our tires, here you can see a nice soft tread pattern in here. But is accurate to the scale of what these tires are. You're going to have to clip them off this rubber tree, clip, them off, clip off these little bits, and then spin this in your wheel spinner. But overall, quite a lot of nice little components. And here we have our decal sheet. And you get a choice of red line tire decals or standard white wall decals. Now these license plates are both from Illinois. One is just basically charge and then the other is a collector plate style number 46. We get all the little Charger RT graphics as well as there's our gauges. A choice of a white, black or red stripe depending on what kind of car color you want. And then RT logos, Super B's going on here as well as our Magnum 440 air cleaner. And then a Delco Freedom battery decal right here for uh, that battery. Remember I was trying to see if it actually had a manufacturer name on it? Well, it's on the decal sheet. So again, very nice details. And that completes our look at the 1969 Dodge Charger by Ravel Monogram. Tune in next week when we go down to Hazard County and see the other Dodge Charger. Well, I hope you enjoyed this great review of the 1969 Dodge Charger, and I hope you can find one of these great model kits out there in Cyberland. Now, we may not have this kit for sale right now at Monster Hobbies, but don't forget to check out every cool model car we do have on our channel, on our website, and wherever. But anyway, you want to check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca for these amazing kits. And until next time, everybody, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are the first to see it. And until next time, happy model building.